Magia is back and it's a realistic transcript to say that. Trust me on Antonio Silva, people. Ruben Dias, Palhinha, Nuno Mendes. Antonio Silva is another one that you gotta remember. He's gonna be a top five center back in the world. I believe that, a hundred percent. Benfica, realistic transfers and possible lineups for next season. Most definitely the defenders, I'll be saying, the guaranteed lineup. But for more videos just like this of the Portuguese League, do not forget to like, like, like this video, comment your predictions of the Portuguese League, and share this video. We're so lucky in Portugal for having Ruben Amorim at Sporting, Roger Schmidt at Benfica, and Sergio Conceição at Porto. It's gonna be a fun season. If you want to see more content about the Portuguese League, like a realistic transfers and lineups for Sporting, Porto, and Sporting Braga, hit the like button. More than 200 likes for a video just like that next week. Before I talk about Roger Schmidt, I want to say a big congratulations to Rui Costa. Rui Costa is the president of Benfica, a legend, a legend of AC Milan, and a legend of Benfica, comes back because he loves the mystique of the club, and he wins the league. How does he win the league, Rui Costa? By doing the right decisions at the top. Decision making has been sublime. Sporting director Rui Pedro Braz, helping in moves like Enzo Fernandes and Roger Schmidt, the right coach last season. Great job by Rui Costa. Rui Costa has experience in the locker room, which makes him understand how the players feel. He feels the compassion. If a player is struggling, he understands them because he was a sensational player in his time. Fantastic job once again, I gotta say, Rui Costa. And even Speed, he, Christian Ronald, met uh, Speed because of Rui Costa. He allowed access to the garage. But yes, let's stick to football. Benfica aren't disappointing me in this transfer window. I was a skeptical for Di Maria, but Di Magia is back and it's a realistic transcript to say that. The haters are gonna hate. The haters are gonna hate. And yes, he's gonna be a short period of time, Di Maria, at Benfica. But the impact is clear. He's four assists away of getting to the top assister number of Cristiano Ronaldo in the Champions League. He, he currently has 38 assists, Di Maria, in the Champions League. Cristiano Ronaldo, four. He's gonna surpass maybe Ronaldo in the Benfica jersey. A house, a home where he develops. Just a beautiful story with Jorzuz. <laughs> Di Maria. And at the left back, you Rasek, that was a big, bold move too. I would have preferred Kerkez, I'm gonna be honest. I was quite surprised that Kerkez went to Bournemouth too. But you Rasek is an elite option too. He's young, he's very good going forward in my point of view. And defensively, I think he's better than Grimaldo. He's better than Grimaldo. But going forward, Grimaldo, the technique, the crosses, very special player. But I'm gonna say long term, Benfica fans are gonna like you Rasek a lot. So Di Maria done. Jurasek done, and the biggest, the biggest transfer that I was shook that Benfica got it done too. Arkun Koksu is one of the best midfielders outside of the top four leagues in Europe. I have no doubt in what I'm saying. 25 million plus five in variables is a bargain for Arkun Koksu. So Benfica, Di Maria, Arkun Koksu, Jurasek, they extend the loan of Gonçal Gedge, and I'm still expecting a goalkeeper to come that has elite ball distribution, a player like Bento, much confident with his feet than Vlako Dimus, and I'm expecting maybe a right back to be contesting with Alexander Ba. I thought it was gonna be Tiago Sanch, but it was. But still, Benfica have an elite lineup. And let's not forget Tankstadt and Sheldarup. Sheldarup, I'm, I'm, I'm huge on him. I watched him at Nordsland. When he was playing at Nordsland, he was no doubt one of the best players in the league. Okay, if not the best, if not the best. And he was like 16, 17. He arrives now at Benfica since January growing too. And I'm dying, dying to see if he's going to play this season. Andreas Sheldrup, world-class potential. And departures, Grimaldo, big, big departure. More than seven years at Benfica, at Bayer Leverkusen. Gilberto didn't work out with Roger Schmidt. Lucas Vrissim, after those two ACL injuries, very hard to stay at the club. Enrique Araújo, another loan move. Not... Not to Watford, but to Famalico. I think it's a really good decision, and rumoredly so, Benfica got preference to buy on Ivan Jaime. Ivan Jaime that Porto wants, Cincinnati wants, and as it seems, Benfica don't need Ivan Jaime. But they still, because of the loan of Enrique Raúl, they still get the preference, and Sandro Cruz leaving, and Seferovic. So a full rebuild, but no surprises on my end. And I know, I know people, Fika often do a big sale every summer. But this summer, they don't need it since they sold Enzo Fernandes for 120 million. I'm not saying it's not gonna happen, but they don't 
needed. And that puts Benfica in a power position in, uh, uh, next to the world's biggest clubs. So Benfica sold Enzo Fernandez for 120 million, became the most expensive transfer ever in Premier League history. And they have back-to-back -back seasons going through in the Champions League, earning more than 60 million plus. Back-to-back -back seasons, selling Darwin too. Let's not forget, elite business Benfica with selling Felix for more than 120 million, selling Darwin for 80 million plus variables, selling Enzo for 120 million. Benfica with these three players, they've gotten more than 300 million. More than 300 million. And look at the squad that Benfica's doing. Don't sleep, don't sleep. I'm not joking, Enzo Fernandez in six months, they like double, triple the investment. And I know there was a World Cup there, but you gotta have the recruitment, the development, the right decision making. And so like, didn't lose any match in the Champions League with Befica. And he topped the group at Befica. Don't forget that. Don't forget that. Befica topped the group with PSG and Juventus. And the deal like Enzo Fernandez happens, and it's because of Rui Costa making decisions at the top. And I said, Roger Schmidt, Roger Schmidt too. Congratulations for the elite tactics he's done since he's come to Portugal. And Roger Schmidt has trusted Seychelles. Okay, the talent has played in a great style of play. He wins the league and goes through in the champion. That is elite. And Benfica, when they sell Enzo for 120 million, at the end of the January transfer window, they didn't sign substitutions. Dronev and Chiquinho were the ones to step in. And Roger Schmidt was the one making that decision. An 18 year old like Dronev, that was a great, great decision for Roger Schmidt to do. So this season, now they have got shoe. And that's why I have to, I just have to admire the brilliance of Roger Schmidt. He says, it's fine. We can win the league still, and we can do a good performance in the Champions League. We do not need to buy anyone. No rush buys to replace Senso. Let's get the person we want, Orkun Koksu. And that's what happened. Rumoredly, the parents of Orkun Koksu went to see the Befica Inter games in the Champions League. That was like February and March. That was like March, sorry. That was in March. So look at the preparation. Look at, and that's, that's, that's elite. That's, that's a club that knows how to do business. And I see a ton of news about João Félix de Benfica, Gonçal Ramos leaving to every top European team, but Gonçal Ramos can stay another season at Benfica. As I said, Benfica are not desperate to sell. They've sold Enzo for a big fee, and Gonçal Ramos, another year Benfica developing. That is fantastic. That is fantastic. This is a player that in the Portuguese league, Gonçal Ramos scored 19 goals without penalties. Without penalties. He's proven talent inside the box. Finishing, work rate. He's so good, people. So for these reasons, if, if you have such a fantastic talent, why would you want to sell him for the wrong price? If he's below 70 to 80 million, Benfica are not going to sell him. And I completely agree with that. The player is happy. He can stay another year. He can develop more with Roger Schmidt. So let's wait and see. But do not disrespect Gonçal Rems, saying he's a flop, he's this, he's that. No. He's a guaranteed baller for whoever team that sides him. Gonçal Rems, talented striker. And Benfica, he could stay another season. And it's a fantastic choice for him too. I want to say that. And I'm sure if Rasmus Winterhoelen goes to PSG, Man United will want Gonçal Rems. If Winterhoelen goes to Man United, PSG will, go, will want Gonçal Rems. So this transfer window is all waiting on Kane, Ozime, Rasmus Winterhoelen now. And then, then other players are going to start to move. But let's wait and see. I would like, I would like him for, for Gonçal Rems to stay another season. Last season, it was Taremi the top goal scorer in the Portuguese league. So Gonçal Rems, voila, go ball. <laughs> but, 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 if Gonçal Rems leaves people, okay, I need to have a with and without expectations for you guys. Because this is realistic transfers and possible lineups. And it is realistic that 70 to 80 million offer comes for Gonçal Rems. So who does Benfica replace him with? They replace with quality like they always do. Gift Orban is my personal suggestion, okay? Unbelievable striker in the Belgian Pro League. Fast. He's the fastest player to score a hat-trick in UEFA competitions. He became that this last season. But my preferred suggestion, and I know Roger Schmidt already knows this, is San. Tiago Jimenez. Santiago Jimenez to Befica is an elite deal. He would become the most expensive uh, transfer ever in Befica history, but he would be worth it. And I know you people at home must be must be thinking, another one from Feyenoord? Orkun Koksu, 25 points. 
25 plus 5 million in variables, he goes to Benfica. Orchins, 15 million, he goes to Benfica. And now Santiago Jimenez too? That's a robbery to Feyenoord. And it is, it's true. But the reason why Benfica goes to Feyenoord to get players is because the, start, the style of play of Arnest Plot is very similar to Roger Schmidt's style of play. And these players, they love the sun. They love to go through in the Champions League. And that's what Benfica does. <laughs> <laughs> and I love the suggestion of Santiago Jimenez going to Benfica to replace if Gonçalo Ramos leaves. Why? Work rate, he's elite. The defensive duties, he's elite. He's a very confident and fit, great finisher. And I believe at Benfica, Santiago Jimenez would become the most expensive Mexican player ever in the history of Mexico. I'm saying that. Believe me. Only if Gonçalo Ramos leaves though. And the João Félix suggestions. Look, João Félix is a dream move for any Benfica fan. But does Benfica need João Felix right now with the, with the amount of players they have for that position? I'm sorry to say they don't. But I would never, I don't think Rui Costa would ever say no to João Felix. He elevates any squad, especially Benfica. But João Felix to be in his best, he needs to go to a world-class team for his traits, like Man City, like Barcelona. He said Barcelona because he knows from Felix that if he goes to Barcelona, he's one of the best players in the world. Definitely under 24, next to the big names. That's what Felix deserves with the talent that he has. But if Sean Felix goes to Galatasaray, I can guarantee you every Benfica fan is thinking in the inside their minds, why didn't he go to Benfica? So let's wait and see what's gonna happen. But again, he's got the quality to play at the highest level. João Félix, eu acredito em ti, continua, and this is going to be a big, big decision. So let's hope he makes the right decision. But put down below in the comments, where do you think João Félix will be going? And if, if you think Gonçalo Ramos is going to be staying at Benfica? This é uma grande questão, it's a big question here in Portugal. So this is the part that you guys wanted to listen. It's the Benfica possible lineups. And it's a hard, hard decision. But in defense, 100%. It's going to be Vlako Dimes or Bento if he signed, Jurasek, Antonio Silva, Otamendi, and Alexander Ba. This is the core. Very important to keep Otamendi another season. Great, great by Rui Costa. Another thing, he understands that he cannot lose. Goalkeeper, a left back, another center back, and all in one season, he needs to keep stability. So Grimaldo leaves and the goalkeeper might leave too, Vlako Dimes. But again, Otamendi and Antonio Silva, that's going to be the best defensive duo, but a center-back partnership in the P Portuguese league next season. And the development that Antonio Silva has been having with Otamendi is unreal. Otamendi wins the World Cup, but the achievement of developing a kid like Antonio Silva is going to be levels and talked for years to come. Trust me on Antonio Silva, people. Ruben Dias, Palhinha, Nuno Mendes. Antonio Silva is another one that you got to remember. He's going to be a top five center back in the world. I believe that. A hundred percent. And in the most valuable center backs talk, Ruben Dias and Antonio Silva are already two in the top five names. That's it. Portuguese pride. And now from the midfield forward, the possible lineups are so so many. But the best lineup, in my opinion, will be by the end of this season, João Neves next to Orkun Koksu. Koksu is irreplaceable, completely the starter of Benfica, most expensive player ever in the history of the club. Koksu and João Neves, then forwards. I believe Oshin's at the left wing. He's unreal with the pressure, with Gonçalo Ramos ahead of him, and Rafa and Di Maria. That is scary. João Neves, Koksu, Rafa, Di Maria. Uh, that is... Like unreal options. Orsons go Salgames. Then you have Andrea Sheldrup that I'm not mentioning. João Mario. And of course, David Neres. David Neres had more than 10 goals and 10 assists last season with Roger Schmidt. And he was a sub many times. And if they don't play the team I first said, they can play Orkun Koksu with Florentino. They can put João Mario, that I believe will have a very important role this season. And other players. Sheldrup. Go bold. I trust this kid. He's got that potential. Diego Moreira left, but Sheldrup stayed. And let's see what's going to happen. So the Benfica lineup, possible lineup for next season. Vlako Dimes in goal. Jurasek, Antonio Silva, Otamendi and Alexander Ba. Then forwards, Orkun Koksu, João Neves, Orchens, Rafa, Di Maria and Gossal Ramos. João Mario, Gossal Guedes, David Neres, André Sheldrup, Chiquinho, Florentino. All going to be involved in the team and you need a list of 22 names to 20 at least to be a top team in the champions league and that's what benfica are going to be doing 
But I'm referring to Benfica in this video, and Benfica are buying big time because they know the competition isn't going to stop. Be Porto won the three competitions last season. Benfica won the league, but Sergio Conceição has something to prove with now Nico Gonzalez coming, Alan Varela coming, Fran Navarro coming, Diogo Costa staying, Otavio staying, Ataremi might, might not be staying, but still, he hasn't left. So Benfica have to go bold and sign players. This is the competition and sporting too. Sporting cannot afford to end up behind Sporting Braga another season. That's why I'm so excited for the Portuguese league people. But again, tell it me your possible lineups of Benfica for next season. Realistic transfers that I didn't refer to. I could have forgotten something. Please tell me. I want to see the community going bold. And I've said, if you want a Sporting, a Porto, Sporting Braga, or any other team like Ajax, Roy Lantwerp, they won the Belgium league, comment down below your suggestions of the FC Wonderkid community. If you're listening until now, thank you for going bold.